Just want to welcome everyone to the Goverland Reach Goverland version 9 beta invite and webinar. I'm joined today by our uh, fearless leader, CTO, CEO, Pascal. Uh, Hello, this is everybody. Free. Um, so uh, we're very excited to show you uh, what we've been working on for uh, what he's been working on mostly for about the past year. And uh, this is um, a tremendous step forward for Goverland and actually a really great step forward for uh, remote support as a whole, right? Uh, uh, off camera, we have Victor Cruz as usual. He'll answer any questions that come up that uh, you know he can type an answer to. And um, so you know we have somebody moderating the uh, Q and A as well. Most of the questions we will answer live, though. So uh, once again, just want to welcome you to the Goverland Reach demo. And with that, we'll get going. We have a couple of slides this time. Normally, we don't do any slides, but uh, we've kept it down to uh, three slides. And this is the first one. So we got one right out of the way, uh, right away. And uh, the second one here is going to uh, show you the three different uh, modes that Goverland Reach and Goverland version 9 now offers. Um, so um, as opposed to just the standard Goverland mode that you know, if you're a customer, you're used to. Um, where you can you know, control an unlimited number of connected devices, devices on your LAN or within your VPN. Goverland Reach allows you to have the full functionality of Goverland for any machine that has the agent configured and installed on it. Um, and so there's three different modes that we're going to be offering and that we've thought about. The first one is your standard corporate user. It's a machine that you own. Uh, but it's no longer within your environment. It's sent out there somewhere in the world. Um, so, and you, you don't want to support that VPN anymore. And you know, maybe maybe the VPN is the thing that keeps keeps going wrong. So, what you can instead do is have the agent on that machine and send it out there wherever it is. You can install the agent over the web as well. We'll be demonstrating that, and you can fully consume Goverland. You can have the full controls of Goverland for either a user working at home or a user traveling. This includes the unattended remote control and really a whole lot more. Uh, the second instance is on-demand support. And uh, we covered this in the invite where you can now um, send a session agent. A session is it's like a one-off session. Uh, to anybody, so whether it's a customer, whether it's a whether it's an employee, whether it's somebody else, um, what it, it's almost like a token-based thing. I can send them a link either through a chat or an email or something like that. They click on the link, it downloads a little. Uh, what, what does it download? It's not really the agent, but it downloads something, and I'm able to read back a nine-digit number and then have a one-off session with with that end user. So the end user can redo a nine digit number, you type in that nine digit number, and then you connect to their machine, you grab mouse and keyboard control. Um, the last uh, kind of reach mode that we're offering is for um, disparate networks, managed service providers, folks like that. So um, in this case, you know, it, it, what you can what you can do is basically install the Goverland central server at each one of your client sites. And then from there, fully consume Goverland on each one of those client sites from your location. So you know you, you really have to visit one machine at each one of your client sites. You install the Goverland central server, you deploy the agents, and you have full control from your location. So if you're working in a uh, disparate network, uh, if you have multiple environments, disconnected environments that you're managing, uh, you will be able to do that as well. Did I kind of cover that okay, Pascal? Yeah, and, and there was just a quick question from Will Gordon that came in. Um, and the question is, does that agent install and run as an admin or allowing as admin control on the end device? Uh, so if, in, in the case of corporate user or client side, the agent is a permanent agent. So obviously it has admin privileges automatically. It's an unattended admin session. As far as on demand, the when when the session starter is, is is prompting the user, it will allow the user to actually uh, grant administrative privileges to the operator. So it's going to be an end user's choice. The software automatically detects if it is started with admin privileges or not. 
And if it is not, it will, it will allow the user to actually grant you uh, admin access, just to answer the question quickly. And uh, this is you know, a great lead in to our last slide here before we jump into our demo, and that's to talk about security for a moment. Um, so um, you know, in, terms of, in terms of what we're offering and why we feel this is a better and more secure solution. So the first thing is, is this is entirely on premises. There is nothing hosted at Goverland. Uh, at no point are you pinging off of a server at Goverland, and this is very different than than uh, than the other remote control solutions that you know are kind of fitting into this space. We're we're we are developed for the enterprise and secured by the enterprise. So um, you know we're packaging up this piece of software, and then you are able to deploy it within your within your environment. Uh, secure it within your environment, fully maintain it, and anything that goes wrong at our location, it has no effect on you. Anything that goes wrong at customer A's location has no effect on customer B, and so on. So there's no external point of failure. So you know, I, you know, if you look at some of the other hosted solutions out there, and you read some of the news, you can see that um, you know they've all had issues within the past couple of months. And these issues have effects on all of their customers. And what we're trying to do is minimize it. We want to have like a really wide threat, can threat canvas. So if you look at some of the other solutions, if you want to attack one of their customers, you know exactly where to go. It's at their service provider, their remote control tools kind of headquarters where their servers are. But here, you know, again, customer A has no effect on customer B. Um, there's also direct and secure connections with your clients. So, um, so it, what this means is that you know I cannot do an unattended remote control session on a machine that I don't have permissions to do that on. So we're using that native Windows authentication that you see within the rest of Goverland. Um, everything is encrypted. Everything is compressed. There is a new compression engine built into Goverland, so everything is compressed really, really nicely now. Uh, Pascal was home. We were using uh, Comcast wireless internet, just a consumer internet. I was here. I was watching YouTube videos in HD with sound coming through. So, uh, so we're we're really getting there. Um, and there's no user password stored offsite. And this is kind of important because if you look at some of the other solutions, um, you will see that you know passwords have been compromised. Issues have have come up and uh, and we're not storing any of that information. This is entirely secured, maintained, uh, and hosted by you. And with that, we're gonna jump in. I see a lot of the questions coming in, but I think a lot of them we're gonna get we're gonna be addressing as we move through. So just for the sake of flow, we'll continue. Is there any specific one you want to answer now, Pascal? Well I mean go back to the previous slide because I think there is a bit of confusion. Sure. Um, okay so here Again, there are two installation modes. There are the unattended installation of the rich agent, which, which applies to the corporate user machines as well as the client sites. Um, these unattended install of the rich agent will grant admin privileges automatically. However, it doesn't automatically grant it if the actual operator doesn't have the privileges. So one of the questions is that can we stay AD federated and yes, absolutely. Govern only uses native Windows authentication, um, so only AD or local admin credentials will will need to be provided to the endpoint in order to be able to uh, to administer it. And we don't have our own uh, password management system, which allows us to take a, a back route to the agent. Um, so it is fully using Windows native credentials. As far as on demand. Um, the privileges acquired will be the privileges of the process as spawned by the user. So if the user grants admin privileges, then you will be able to see USC prompts. If the user spawns the process uh, with, without USC privileges or not elevated, uh, then you won't see the USC prompts. So just to quickly answer that one as well. And just another quick question about encryption and compliance issues. And we're going to show you some of this, but absolutely everything in Goverland is encrypted in both directions. And we are building in, as we move along, as much 
of the security and compliance standards as we can. And we'll talk about it a little bit more, but one of the things that we're doing are, is handing a cert back and forth when you make one of these web connections so that there, it prevents a man in the middle attack. We're, hand, we're, we're doing a complete audit, path, audit trails of what the admin's done. Already you can see uh, which admin connected to which machine, all that information is logged, but you'll be able to see a lot more, like stuff like what that admin has done um, and things like that. So uh, let's jump into a demo and we will definitely address more questions. Now, as I do, as we do this demo, just you see right away, this is running off of my production machine, um, the machine I use every single day, like all the other <laughs> web cars we do. And so if something goes wrong, it always has that caveat that this is, this is the production version. So the first thing we want to show you is, uh, is the is the server side of Garland. First of all, this is the uh, new UI kind of Windows 10 theme. There's a couple of different themes you can choose from. This is the dark theme. But uh, what I'm going to do first is connect to um, this uh, this server here that is running um, the the um, the server the Garland Central Server version three now. So um, the you know this is a new version of the Garland Central Server. So I'm just going to log in and uh, just show you. Um, how Goverland Reach is configured. This ability to, um, to, to connect to machines over the internet is called Goverland Reach. It's basically I'm, be, I'm able to now reach out to machines. So uh, we'll take a look at the configuration. Uh, very, very simple and straightforward. We have good documentation on this, but essentially what, what we've done is you give the organization a name and then you have a public facing reach address. Right? So it's either an IP address or a DNS name or something like that and a port number. Traffic from this address is getting routed to the machine that um, has your Goverland Central Server running on it. So there's two different components to, uh, to Goverland Reach. There's the Goverland Central Server that has the Reach configuration and then the actual remote control um, or the, the rest of Goverland, the, uh, the actual admin tool set. <clears throat> so now uh, I'm going to open another tab here, and we're going to jump right into a unattended remote control session over the web. And um, my wife was nice enough to uh, lend us her machine for this purpose. And I am just going to hit connect, and I am in. And it's really that simple. This is an unattended remote control session over the web. And uh, just to show you what's going on on this machine, if I open up the control panel here, and I go into the Goverland client configuration, you can see that this machine knows that, what, that when it's out there and it's just you know, over the web, it knows to reach back to the Goverland central server and tell the Goverland central server basically where it is and how you can connect to it. So the, the, the only two things that you would need to remote control a machine over the web is the agent and an internet connection, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> now, there's a couple of different ways for me to deploy the agents onto the machine. I don't have to pre-deploy the agents, although I can, you know, the Goverland agent manager is now in the Goverland central server as well. But we, we can also do these on-demand remote assistance. I can generate an instruction message and either generate a client email or copy the web link to a clipboard. If I generate a client email, it's going to pop up an email. It, it'll bring your organization name directly in. You can send this to the end user. You can send them a link through chat or something like that. And that will allow them to then download the agent. Um, so I'm just going to show you what the agent looks like when they download it. And I have it uh, downloaded in Chrome here. So let me just uh, navigate over to that real quick. And here we go. And so this is what they say. So they're, they're offered a choice um, to do a this time only, which is that single session, or to install the agent permanently. If they choose to install the agent permanently, it's going to appear under your devices. And then from that point on, you will have unattended access, assuming you're, you can authenticate. If you do it this time only, uh, if the end user does it this time only, it generates that nine digit code. The admin types that into a new Goverland reach uh, session and then is able to grab mouse and keyboard control at any point in time the end user can end the session. <clears throat> um, 
sure we can create it. Um, you can also drop a, you know, a little icon on your user's desktop so that this way they can double click on that icon in the future and, um, and create a new nine digit token. So um, you have a whole bunch of options there. Now, there's a, there's, there, there are some things I need to be able to do these unattended uh, remote control sessions. And the first thing is, is obviously I need to be a local admin, just like the rest of Goverland. You need to have permissions to perform these tasks. This is how we're building a strong, secure, compliant product. So um, the, the credentials get stored in the credentialing manager. If I go and remove the credential um, and, I, and I attempt to reconnect to that machine, I'm not going to be able to do so. I, I need to have those credentials saved. It's just going to prompt me. It's going to say, you know, you don't have the credentials. And if I type it in, um, if I enter my credentials here and hit enter, and, and then I can authenticate, and then it'll let me establish that remote control session. Um, if you're managing um, another site, you don't have to, you know, and, and by, by the way, this credential is now stored in the credential manager. So you don't have to do this over and over again. If you have those local admin credentials, it'll store in the credential manager. If I'm managing another site, right, so here's another entirely separate site, I can configure an alternate credential for the entire realm. So instead of having to visit, again, machine by machine, I can open up the credentialing manager and say, whenever you're connecting to a machine at this site, use this alternate credential. Anything I'm missing here, Pascal? Uh, yeah, I'm answering question at the same time as I'm listening to you. So, but you're doing great. I'm doing good, okay. You're doing great. I don't normally have the CEO on. You want me to go through a couple of uh, questions? Um, yeah, that, absolutely. That other people can benefit from them? Yeah, let's, let's read them out as we um, All right, so one of the question is, uh, is it recommended to use the, the same server as GCS v2? So a lot of our clients currently are using GCS v2. Uh, so that, you know, the GCS v3, which includes rich services, is designed to work side by side with GCS v2. So they will not conflict each other. So you can completely, once you are ready to go through a migration from v8 to v9, you can completely install the entire V9 infrastructure on the uh, side by side with the V8 infrastructure, and they won't actually um, conflict or collide with each other. There, there is a new service location record name, and there is a new port, and all of this. So uh, you don't need to install GCS V3 and replace GCS V2 at the same time. Right. So they will run side by side as people get up to speed with Coverland version nine. Um, yeah, right. now, Scott has a good question here. Does the end user need, have to have admin rights to install the unattended client? Yes. Yes, because the unattended client is uh, a service. And so the user needs to have enough privileges to actually install a service. So, but no, normally, you know, users fall into two different buckets. One of them is the actual corporate user, which is using a laptop or a home machine, which is corporate provisions, and these you, as the admin, should have already admin privilege on the machine and, and pre-install the agent. The other bucket is um, the end user at home, which is for on-demand, and usually these are, are the owners of the machine, so they should at least know how to acquire admin privileges on the local machine too. And just for the single sessions, like to read back the nine-digit number to the operator, you don't need to be in No, absolutely not, no. I mean, for, for, for the on-demand one-time session, not the unattended, but the attended sessions, you don't need, you, you, you don't need any privileges. You can acquire admin privileges if, if you as a user to check that, you know, give admin privileges checkbox, but otherwise you don't need at all. Okay. Um, and uh, will this work on Windows XP, as far as I know? We yes. still support Windows XP. Yes, okay. the XP is not going to be supported on the operator side, but it will be supported on the agent side, on the client side. Okay. And uh, smartphones and tablets, I know this is still roadmap, but uh, you can run Goverland on a, on a Surface tablet. It's really any Windows machine at the moment. Yes, there is two, two things on the roadmap that people should be aware of, uh, and that was one of the questions. One of the questions was, is Mac, Mac OS X as well as Linux will be supported by Rich? Uh, in the current upcoming release, no. Uh, Mac OS X and Linux are not supported uh, uh, by Rich. They're supported through the standard channels, uh, which is VNC, uh, but not through Rich. 
but however, this is completely in our roadmap, and this is going back West End and Linux support will be released in 2017 and, and hopefully early 2017. So it is definitely on the roadmap. You can you can expect it to come. Okay. Now there's a couple of questions in there that I think we can answer uh, all at once in terms of Goverland policy. So the Goverland Central Server until Goverland version three, uh, until we introduce, um, um, you know, uh, Goverland Reach has been a policy server. Uh, it's been a way for me to distribute how Goverland is going to act in different scenarios, and we can get very, very granular with this. And we've added this new kind of. Uh, drag and drop overlay where I can name each one of my locations, I can point each one of my locations at a group of machines, um, whether it's a, uh, you know, an Active Directory OU or an AD site or a Goverland Reach site or an IP range or something like that. And then from there, I can drag a policy and drop it onto all of those machines. And your policies are really almost anything you can you can think of in terms of behavior, in terms of what you want to allow the end user to do, in terms of what you want to allow the operators to do. So just a quick example here, you know, a pre-session action. What do you want to have happen before a remote control session starts? Do I want nothing to happen? Do I want to prompt the local user for approval? Do I want to disable remote control on all these machines? So um, again, very granular control over the experience of Goverland. And this is an area that is getting enhanced more and more and more as days go days go on. <clears throat> um, and uh, we're going to jump into one more remote control session here, and this is to um, uh, to talk about the disparate networks a little. So, if I'm managing multiple environments from one location, um, uh, how can I get this done? So just going to open up this server here and just show you very quickly just some basic server configuration. So essentially what happens is, is you can define the Goverland central servers as masters or primaries and slaves or dependents, right? So the master in this case is the one on demo-dc. This other site is dependent on demo-dc and therefore gets all of its policies uh, all the auditing reports and all of the REACH services flow back to that master site. So, um, so this way, essentially what, we, what you can do is you establish a primary Goverland central server, and then you, you go to one machine at one, of these, uh, at one of your sites, if you're a managed service provider, if you're working on, again, disjointed networks, uh, you install just the Goverland central server at that site, you define it as a dependent, and then from there, I can deploy agents to all of the machines on that site right from this same machine. So right from here, I can go and I can add all of the uh, all of the um, the site, all of the the machines at that site, and have them all reporting right back to the primary almost immediately. Um, uh, just to uh, address the questions about. Um, about um, UAC prompts, because this is, again, a huge issue. We want to show you that you indeed have admin privileges on machines that you're able to have admin privileges on. And you can see I can click on that UAC prompt. I don't need Marnie to help me click on it at all. Um, so you do have complete access to this machine, assuming you have that local admin credential saved. Um, just going through a couple of the other little tools and enhancements that have been added in. Um, you can still chat and send messages, but we've added in audio capture and audio chat, so you can actually talk to end users now. I don't know if that's an enhancement every IT every IT person wants. You know, I think you know some folks try and avoid talking to end users, but if it's needed, you can just click a button. You don't have to pick up the phone. You can have a conversation with them. Um, there are. Um, um, all of these tools here that you see in the banner, the, these are this is kind of our proof of concept for the rest of Goverland. At the moment, what we're beta, what we have in beta at the moment is the remote control portion of Goverland, and that's what we're going to open up access to. But this is the task manager that you'll see um, in in uh, Goverland V9 administration and diagnostics, and you can see that it's not part of the remote control session at all. As a matter of fact. I can end the remote control session, and I can still have my task manager going. 
Um, the task manager has been enhanced quite a bit. Um, it does some very, very cool things now. I can click on this all time button if I have a server that's peaking in the middle of the night uh, doing something weird. Just have it running, click on all time, hover over to that time, that, that, that peak, and I can see exactly what was causing that. Uh, we have the same enhancement on the networking tab, so I can see what's causing networking activity on these remote machines. Um, and there's a whole bunch more if you're working on, um, you can see a lot of details if you're working on a, uh, on a, on a, on a, a RDP servers or a Citrix server or something like that. You can see consumption by user, um, uh, a lot more details, a lot more visibility to help you diagnose and troubleshoot machines. Anything else on this, Pascal? Um, no. No? That's all good. And um, once that, uh, once, you know, again, as further proof of concept, I can right click on this machine and without a remote control session, launch that behind the scenes command prompt that we're all used to. And again, it passed my credentials through. So now I actually have a command prompt going on this remote machine. I can do an IP config, I can do whatever else I need to do. <clears throat> So um, the auditing section in the uh, Government Central Server, again, is going to show me immediately remote system access activity and uh, Windows login, log out events. But uh, from what I understand, we're adding more into this section. Um, uh, you want to talk about that a little in terms of when I do, the, um, when I do a remote control session, what, else, what other information we'll be able to share and pass through? Yeah, so right now in auditing, um, only remote system access via remote control is audited as well as Windows login and logout events. Um, just a quick note on this, these, the audits, like in Jesus, on the version two of the Government Central Server, these audits could be turned on and off. There was an option. It's no longer an option. Uh, it's on and always on by default. Um, and it's because we've improved the uh, fast connect and the user logged in workstation detections algorithm to actually consume the data provided in that central server. So that's why they cannot be turned off. Uh, as far as admin actions, which are performed via the governance suite, we are going to be auditing these as well and they will be included. So subsequently, there will be another log here where you'll be able to see any kind of admin actions from executing a new process, killing a process, modifying the registry, or, or any other admin actions will be audited as well. And, and these will be also provided to the end user during an on-demand session. And just to share a bit, and there's a question in here about transmissions being encrypted. Absolutely everything in Goverland is encrypted in both directions. You can see this connection is using AES-256, so it should meet any standard that you're looking for in terms of compliance. Anything else we have to show here, or can we uh, move on to? Well, there, there was a quick question here, but um, being able to export data of, of miscellaneous blogs. Um, the, the GCSV3 now has a database backend. Uh, version 2 did not have a database backend. So not only you'll be able to export through traditional channels inside the user interface, but you can always go back to your database, go to a, a, a table, and export the data into any format you wish from there. And uh, I, I need yeah, another question. Is the Government Central Service supporting Azure or AWS? This is just a distribution platform, yes. You know, if you have a server and you, you configure the network properly, you have a, an FQDN which points to the actual internal static IP of the AWS or the Azure server, um, then yes, it can be used uh, on, on, on these kind of cloud, cloud platforms. Um, another question here, is it possible to customize the taskbar on the remote control tool? For instance, we have people who use remote control for training that aren't doing troubleshooting. And absolutely, the Government Central Server allows you uh, to perform a whole bunch of feature restrictions, including everything here. So that this way, if you're using it just for training purposes, stuff like that. Um, now, the, the cool thing about Government Reach um, is that it's it's... The way it works is that all of your machines, when you install the agent on them, get configured with those reach settings. But when they're within your environment and you're on the same LAN or they're VPN connected, it's still peer-to-peer -peer communication and doesn't leverage reach at all. It's only once they leave your environment and they are then 
um, you have the internet in between you, that they'll automatically reach back to the Government Central server and tell the Government Central server where they are and how to connect to them. And this is outbound traffic, so it should be allowed right through without issues. Uh, we've been testing this for a while and have it tested on a whole bunch of machines. So there's uh, some questions here about pricing. So uh, what we're th the, the path we're going down is that um, Goverland version 9 is a complementary upgrade to all of our customers with active maintenance, uh, just like we've uh, always done. Um, if, if, uh, when, when you upgrade, you're going to get 10 reach nodes for free. So that this way you can deploy, you can do 10 on-demand remote, concurrent on-demand remote assistance sessions at any point in time or install 10 reach nodes or do whatever else you want to do with those 10. Now, if you, if you need additionals, um, they're, they're, the cost that we're looking at is $5 per node per year. So if you think about this in terms of comparison to other products out there, um, other products, you know, are on the enterprise side, you're looking at $3 per node per month uh, for just remote control. Now, Goverland Reach is opening up the full capabilities of Goverland. So you can deploy software, you can run reports, you can, uh, you can do anything else that you need to do in the full Goverland suite, including scope actions and everything else. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, and on top of that, remote control. So yeah, you get, you get these 10 reusable nodes for free. And again, the way it works is you're gonna deploy your agents. Your agents are gonna be configured for reach. So you can decide uh, using the Goverland Central Server whether you want reach consumed on different machines so that uh, if, you, if you need to have a bucket of them reserved for on-demand sessions, you can do so. But otherwise, uh, you would buy a pool of reach nodes for, for as many machines as you have outside of your environment in a concurrent fashion, right? So as soon as they come back in, they're not consuming reach anymore. It's just like if I'm managing 10,000 machines, but only 500 of them are outside of my environment at any point in time, I only need 500 reach nodes. And that 500 reach nodes is going to cost me you know, a very reasonable amount compared to the other products in the, in this space. So um, that's that's kind of the uh, the the path we're going down now. Um, um, and uh, the the ten free reach nodes is perpetual, so it's not it's not you're, you're going to get them. They're, it's not just for one year. You're going to get ten. And I think um, if you're going to help us beta test, you're going to provide good feedback. We're going to be able to, you know, you're going to work with us in making this a a really ironclad product that we wanted to get to, we will happily update, uh, we will happily uh, increase that to 20. So if you're beta testing, you're getting 20. Um, and if you're providing good feedback, you're keeping that at 20. So um, um, <clears throat> uh, we'll take a couple more questions here. So uh, can, the reach note, can the reach license be transferred between, between nodes if machines are changed or altered? And again, it's not really a reach license and it's not permanent on any machine. It's, it's, it's if the machine is outside your environment, it'll consume reach if it's configured to do so. If it's inside and, your environment, it's to not. Clarify, to clarify something, on a technical basis, there is nothing, no, no license to be installed or, or distributed to your client machine. I mean, the client machine is just simply install the agents as, as you're currently doing now. There is nothing to be applied to it. There is no license distribution to the endpoints. The license is applied at the server level and, and so it's a one-time thing. It's just, it just counts how many currently active outside registration and then applies the license from it. That's it. Um, a question here uh, is um, um, we want to package up the Goverland agent files so we can deploy them using the files instead of having end users download download these themselves who do not have admin credentials so is, is that are we capable of doing that so basically I, I can still grab the uh the configured agent from c program files just like i could before correct yeah i mean it's it's there and, and um but i don't know what it means to to 
to uh, package it so that users with no admin privileges So can if they have another deployment solution, can they deploy the agents yeah. with another deployment solution? Yeah. And yeah, you can do that today and you can do that with Coverland Reach. Um, we can uh, offline a quick demo of that or help you get that configured. Um, that and so that it is clear, there is no distinction between the Coverland agent which is distributed on internal machines and on-demand reach agent and reach agent of any kind it's all one agent it's all one exe the only difference between the one that you have installed with the product and that the one that the end user ends up with via a on-demand web link is that the exe that they receive has been injected with rich information so it's that's why there is no configuration there is nothing to be pushed to the user you don't have to tell them to actually configure anything um, so if you want to distribute an agent which also include the rich settings then you would just have to use one of those uh, injected exes and if i just copy the web link to the clipboard here and I download the agent again, that's the configured agent. So exactly. you, can, that's the you one. can just download that agent and then you can distribute it using any means you want if you don't want to use um, the built-in tools to deploy the agents. Um, can, uh, I'm not sure on this one, can reach, can reach be used between standard users? I don't, I'm not exactly sure what that means. But um, again, if the, the, the um, if it is related to admin privileges, meaning a, a non-admin user can access a non-admin end user, then then yes, if it is via if it is via an on-demand session, the on-demand session, you know, the authentication has been made by the approval of the end user itself. There is no credentials which is being applied for authorization of the session. Um, so as long as the user who does not require to be a local admin of the of the machine. Um, provides the session ID to the operator, then the operator does not need to be a local admin either. So yes, standard user to standard user, on-demand sessions are possible. Uh, I like this one. Will reach allow agent settings to be updated remotely? How about upgrading agents? And you can see that I can right-click on Marnie Think and see uh, query agent info. You can do agent updates. Uh, you obviously can install the agent for the first time. Now. Um, so, um, yes. so, but um, you will be able to update them and, and remove them in case you need to do something. <clears throat> and uh, that's kind of taking us towards the end of the demo here. Um, I do want to just announce when this is going to become available, and that is that we are ready for beta testers. So, um, if you're using Goverland already, um, you're going to see a link show up in my.goverland.com called beta and click on that link there's a quick sign up where you just uh say sign me up and then you'll be exposed to the two downloads so um the 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 beta is ready this is i mean i saw we demonstrated this in a production environment uh um so basically this is good to go um you, this is ready for this is ready for uh consumption and testing there's a there's a feedback form in there. We really want feedback. Well, again, we're we're really working hard to make this a very strong solution. So um, that's very and, and also it's very important to us to provision and 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 architect a secure solution. So we've done our best so far to answer all of the failure that we've seen in the past of other other products out there. Uh, we we will be using. Um, TLS and certificate exchange, we'll be using encryptions, we already have all of this. Uh, but if any beta testers has any security concerns or, or see a security flow, it's very important for us to be aware of it immediately so that we can actually answer it. So uh, Keith has a question, just to clarify, we pre-install the agent on all of our corporate computers, but for Reach to be functional, we must then additionally configure the agent to use Reach, and no. Uh, the Goverland version 9 agent is already, once you configure your Goverland central server with the Reach settings and you deploy the agents, the, the agents come ready for Reach. Yeah, and you can, you can show this um, right there. If you click on options, right where you are, now write the option. Right here, yeah. Option. Then on the top, it says automatically publish these settings to all operators and clients via global policy. So now if you close this, and then you go to the policy tab, global policies. Oh, right here, sorry. 
uh, and then you click on the policies at the root node, right? You'll see the policies right there, governor and rich server configuration. So every time you modify your rich server configuration, it's automatically pushed to all machines which are within the influence of that governance central server. So all operators and agents automatically are aware of, ch of uh, settings changes. You don't need, again, to do anything ever with governance on a per node basis. You don't need to configure the, the nodes. You don't need to install licenses. You don't need to do anything. This is always a centralized mean to, to license the product or to, to distribute it. So uh, Neil has a question. When will uh, pricing and, and details for reach be available? So we do have pricing. We're looking at you know five dollars per node per year sold in fifty packs. So you know for for two hundred and fifty dollars a year additional, you would then have access to sixty reach nodes if you didn't beta test and seventy if you did. Um, so uh, that's that's kind of the path we're going down. And again, you can get as many packs as you need. Um, when this will be generally available and for sale depends on beta. So we're, what we're, what the stage that we're at is we've had a couple of testers going for a while now uh, in different types of scenarios, some managed service providers, some enterprise clients, and now we just need uh, a lot of folks getting us feedback and um, and then from there we will uh, have have a, a better idea of when the general general availability availability will be. Um, and you're not seeing the beta in the portal yet, but it will be published uh, within the next couple of days. I'm hoping to get it done today, but if we don't get it done today, it'll be on, it'll be there by early next week. And, and to, to clarify the, um, the release roadmap, we, we are first going to be releasing Governant v9 with the Governant Reach server, the new Governant Central server v3, which is really the bulk of v9. So that's 90% that's of the work. Uh, and then subsequently, we're going to to release the governance full suite with rich support. So right now, that's, that's the only thing we, which we're missing. Which the is, remote control is coming first, and then the rest of the suite is following after, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, So uh, yes, a, uh, think of Node as a current active offsite connection, not a static license. That's exact. I, I was looking for those words, Jason. Thank you. So a Node is a current active offsite connection, a reach Node, and uh, that is a great way of putting it. I definitely appreciate it. So it's not a static connection, but again, as soon as one of your machines leaves the environment, it'll turn into one of those reach nodes. Um, so if you're not a Governland customer, how do you get access to the beta? And if you're on this webinar live, um, we'll follow up with additional details. Uh, we'll give you another chance to sign in. But uh, for this uh, for this very first go around that's being published in the my.governland.com portal, which all of our customers have access to, so um, so you will you will see it show up in there, and then um, we will work on getting um, evaluators and other folks into the beta as well. Um, can the beta run concurrently with the V8 suite? And absolutely, it, it doesn't. They 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 don't. They run side by side. So um, so you can you can have the uh, you can have the the V8 suite running. It uses a different agent. It uses a you know the Governland Central Server V3, which can run side by side with V2. And then this way you can test this. We're in test mode still. So. Um, um, that, that's kind of where it is. And did I hear that right? We need to buy 50 licenses at a time. No, no, it's just uh, they're sold in 50 packs. So what we don't want to have happen is I need two licenses and I have to charge a card for $10. So they're sold in 50 packs, but you can get, um, you, you know, you can get as many licenses as you need at once. <clears throat> um, Will a remote workstation with the government agent installed still transmit workstation data back to the GCS, or does it require an active reach node to do that? Uh, not sure on that one. Um, but um, in order for government to, to be able to function, you need to have a, you need to have those reach settings configured, and then it'll transmit that data back to the GCS. Um, and I think that takes us just about to. Uh, 
the end of the demo here. Um, again, if we haven't addressed your question or we need more clarification on what you're looking to do, some of them uh, just uh, a little bit difficult, but um, um, we'll definitely follow up with you. We have all the questions here saved and we'll definitely follow up with you um, right after this demo. And I uh, just want to again thank everybody for taking the time to look at Government Reach. We're obviously very excited for this. Uh, this has been a long time coming and uh, I think it's the it's the best product enhancement in my 10 plus years of working on software. So especially, you know, you're getting, you know, 10 nodes for free and 20, if you, again, if you beta test. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just the, the service is, is just, um, is a, uh, is a, you know, uh, it, it's a free upgrade to all customers with maintenance, which is again, fabulous. So, um, so I think this is, uh, this is really just, uh, for me, I'm super excited. I think this is, um, this changes the way we think about Goverland, changes the way I can sell it and I can promote it and, and hopefully changes the way you guys uh, are able to use it. So, um, so following up with more information, you'll get a link to the recording, you'll get uh, any other details you may need. And just wanna thank everybody for taking the time out to join us. And uh, thank you, Pascal. And, and remember to give us feedback. I mean, criticism is very important to us. That's, that's how we, we, we make ourselves better. Right. Uh, don't hesitate to criticize anything from the UI to the process to the documentation to the way Ezra talks or I talk. Just criticize anything you wish and it will be welcome. Well, thanks so much and hope you have a great day.